this is the original voice. <laughs> okay, before we actually start, forgive me because uh, this, there are two instances I had with IAM, um, Indian Institute of Management. This is the second time I'm visiting uh, Indian Institute of Management Shillong. Before that, when um, in way back in 94, 95, my brother-in-law was uh, in IM Bangalore. So I went there for holiday and uh, for a month I stayed there. Slowly the teachers and staff and students thought that I'm also part of them. So I got so scared because I thought that no one would ask me a question. So I went to the library, I started studying, I thought I should study and I believe me within four to five days. I finished the whole series of Tintin. <laughs> so the only thing I, the memory I carry of IAM is Tintin. That was the first time I was, you know, exposed to the corporate of Tintin. <laughs> so, so this is my first time. Uh, I'm not very good at English. I'll definitely somehow manage. That is the only problem I have. And plus, first time I have to make my own script and speak in front of you. So please bear with me. Uh, I won't be that good, but I won't be very good. So, I'll, and I have rehearsed that I thought if I do this, what are you going to do? So, serious note. <clears throat> I'm going to, when my age now is 42 and the waist and the age is same, <laughs> I divide my life into BC and AD. So first I'll talk about the BC era, which is when I started acting and the acting was the passion and uh, money rolling in and fame and a lot of work and good work in television because television was also coming up when I joined television. So we kind of grew together and uh, that is why people, I mean after 20 years, I mean two decades, I can say that I have not decayed yet. I'm still, you know, one of those actors who get work. Because television otherwise you are just there for one um, serial, the serial gets over, the character gets over. The iconic character which I was blessed to do was Rosesh, which after 14 years down the line, I mean it's the whole generation has come up with that character, which makes me feel very humble and I feel proud of it also. And I feel very blessed that I've got an opportunity to do something like that. I never wanted to be an actor. It was absolutely by fluke that I became an actor because my only target was first to finish my 12th, then the target was to finish my graduation. And I was deciding everything as it, is, as it was coming. It was never pre-planned. Acting was a hobby for a long time. The first play I did was in nursery, then in ninth, 10th, and then I was part of theater group in college. But it was never, never a passion. I I thought that I can act and that always made me act. Later on people realized that uh, he should be paid for his acting so that's how I became an actor. I reached Mumbai and my sister was pregnant at that time and uh, somehow you know the things rolled in for me. I wanted to keep myself busy so I joined a theatre group in Mumbai and I stayed back and then I became an actor. Till date, believe me, uh, I haven't got my portfolio done. There is no single portfolio of mine. All the pictures which you see all over is all uh, actually working stills. So this was a fluke. I wanted to do something because, uh, I mean, I never wanted to do something. I, I just kept on doing something. I don't do things thinking whether it is right or wrong. I always do the thing what is needed. And that's how I have been living my life till date. Secondly, I did not have any ambition. Until date, I don't have any ambition. For me, the only thing was that I need to work everything, every day. And later on, what will happen? It's, it's, it's a time thing, like work of Rosesh also. I never thought, you know, in 2004, 2005, that 2018 will be talking about that serial or people will be coming and asking me to recite a poem. So the only thing whenever I do something is I do it with full focus with full intensity, yet relaxed. Because I know when you do something like this, you know, you don't know when the when actually the fruit of that hard work you are going to eat. But somewhere you have actually, you will manage to 
to uh, come up with something like you know uh, a work which which will make you wonder post 20 years 30 years down the line that you know you never thought that this will lead to something and which will also give you so much of recognition that at the time of doing we just do it for the heck of it and we just do it and forget but if you just keep that intensity and focus aligned while doing it at any point of time that will come back to you and that will come back in a big way so that people will remember you forever that was the acting part of it which just went on and uh, till date i am working then last year october something happened to me um, it was uh, 2nd october <clears throat> i was part of rally for river if you are guys well aware about that isha foundation rally for river i was part of it there were so many insights which suddenly i was open to and suddenly i was taught and suddenly i was you know i started exploring and i realized ki we are in a very we are heading towards a pit as as humanity as a generation we are going we are actually heading towards a pit for example 2030 it's a it's a written fact i'm going to talk 2030 will be left with only 50% of water resource imagine i mean last night when we were having dinner and there was this bottle cap right in front and i realized that it was it is said somewhere i've read it somewhere some time back that in 1950 we had 90 liters of water per head you know uh, full universe to whatever for your use in 2011 that water level has gone down to 7 liters per head that means you have to do everything of yours in those 7 liters <coughs> that was one fact second fact the un study says the organic content in the soil is uh, supposed to be 2% in the top soil to grow crop in five states across india karnataka maharashtra andhra tamil nadu and punjab the organic content in the soil has gone down to 0.05% the scary part is within 2 to 3 years from now on 25% of india will turn into desert there won't be any soil because that soil once it loses that organic content changes into sand and we will be left with nothing to cultivate with all these feedback i reach my village karnataka i mean there is another scary fact Karnataka, the water table, uh, the normal boring water table, has gone down to two thousand feet. There is no machine on this planet which can draw drinking water from two thousand feet. I mean, till now, it's it will be the biggest struggle we we are we're doing right now. So, with all these thoughts going in my head, I decide to become a farmer. This is the AD of my second part of my life. I am now. farmer as in actor turned farmer people have journey from being a farmer to actor i'm just reversing the whole order and i'm now a farmer i reach my village i get enlightened under a mango tree and i feel that i feel that i should be farmer so that idea when it came it didn't excite me much the reason behind was that i was thinking that you know i'll grow i'll sell i'll earn i'll be rich and individually i declare that i have worked something for the society but this all i mean whatever i said has too many eyes in it i i i i and i thought of dropping that i for some time because the day you drop what about me it is going to be about everybody and that's what moved me i said individually we indians have worked i mean phenomenally well across world top 5 ceos across the world are indians but does 130 crore people will be moved by their move yeah they will be inspired but when it comes to individual we have always been a win win situation my whole thing was my objective now is to change the whole thing into a collective growth So I reached to my village, which is in Bihar, a small village. I called my farmers. I said that I just want to meet and talk to everybody. 
and they all came, they thought that I've stopped getting work in Mumbai, that is why he's back now on farm. So I was ready to, because uh, the literacy rate is not much, the understanding is according to your literacy, how much you are educated, how much you are, you know, technically supported to understand what, where from where am I coming. Me dropping everything in Mumbai and whatever my acting and everything and then shifting back to my farm and, you know, trying to work together. I just, I said that for, give me a year, just give me a year and I will only come and talk. I did not know that I'm going to do a TED talk with them. My rehearsal of TED talk is with my farmers. I said, I'll just speak with you all about what this whole farming is and how much money you can earn. I was surprised to know through some of the farmers, which is the fact that if you go and buy turmeric in market, it will cost you 50 rupees, you know, and if it has organic certification, the same turmeric is sold at 300 rupees kg, but the farmers get only 10 rupees whether it is sold at 50 or 300. From where are we going to raise them? Because for me, farm should always be over pharmaceutical. The scary thought, I mean, scary fact is that worldwide, $1.3 trillion is worth is food industry worldwide, $1.3 trillion. And pharmaceutical industry is worth $1.9 trillion. People are eating more medicine than food. And this is the situation all over. So I just went on speaking to them and I did not realize that they actually got moved. And um, within four months of me going back on the farm, 380 farmers have agreed to do organic farming with me. And I need to clap for that because it's a... So I realized that I need to do this whole um, organic farming with them. So now what I'm doing, I'll just tell you in short, that I formed an FPO, which is Farmers Producers Organization, which under which all the farmers are going to work, where everyone will be equal shareholder, whether you hold one acre of land or 100 acres of land, everyone will get the same, same money, same benefit, whatever, uh, whomsoever is part of F FPO. And then, from that organic, I'm making now a smart village. Smart village, we can also say that self-sufficient economic village. This village will have its own processing unit, its own, um, um, uh, what you call, cold storage, school for at least 1,000 kids, 100 bed hospital. The farm where you're doing the farming will be completely left untouched. And across that farm, everything will be smart. The infrastructure, everything. And I'm not looking towards the government. I'm not even looking towards the uh, people. Uh, if they fund well, if they don't, it's very good and whatever. I mean, people should come out and support. But my whole ideology was that I'm converting that whole four village into now organic farming. And I'll be raising money over the period with that. And slowly, I'll be making a smart village. For which first step I've taken that merit, I mean, my village has got the electricity after 70 years of independence. So, so the whole objective behind what I'm doing right now is, it's a, such a sad figure that out of 130 crore, only 0.5% of people say that Mera Beta or my son will become a farmer. Why do we still have to read a story which says, Ek garib kisan, one poor farmer, ek bichara kisan, why? We are being fed till the humanity exists, the agriculture is going to exist. Why can't we raise the bar for agriculturists? Why can't we raise the bar for farmers? Why can't we pull them up and bring them in the same same way, the way, I mean, wherever you people are going to be or play, going to be placed in a corporate world? Why not the Facebook likes and the farmer likes are same. Why not the same amount of money should rotate? Why are we treating that? So from now on, I just I have decided and I keep on talking to my son who is nine years old. I keep on telling him that you have to be a farmer. So he only came up with this line and he said, but all the stories we read is about that farmers are poor. Why do we want me to be a poor child? I mean the generation, what are we going to teach them? And that was the most scary thing about me. And I said, I'll 
training this smart village so that tomorrow any watchman sitting across any part of the country does not have to migrate. I mean, people do not have to migrate to another big city to earn their living for, for 10,000 rupees or 15,000 rupees. This whole self-sufficient economic village is going to sustain you and you don't need to even move out 50 kilometers out of that vicinity to earn your living. This place in itself is going to give you so much of money. So when I spoke in figures, the figures farmers understand, I just told them anything which will be sold for 100 rupees in market, you are going to get 80 rupees for that. 10 rupees will go in infrastructure and 10 rupees for my effort. That's all that I need to sustain. <laughs> But this is what I told them, they have agreed to it and by next month we are targeting approximately 1000 farmers coming and joining under FPO. <coughs> there is another thing which I am doing now, that if you go to a place like Bihar, I mean it's a little uh, uh, progress wise, we are still you know struggling and trying to go ahead. Uh, that place, you see people playing football and you see people surrounding, I mean watching football, you don't find a single female face. That is a scary thought in 2018. So I have met a couple of people. We are forming a group within a day or two, I'm saying. I mean, I've already started the initiative a month back, but it's now on the finalization, where I'm going to have inter-village match, where the girls will come and play Kho Kho, Kabaddi and volleyball or whatever. And these guys, again, the audience will be male and female inclusive. So that's one thing, that's the way I'm trying to bring that, you know, uh, that, that collective growth under one roof, for which a lot of hard work is required. But the best part is, you know, our education system, which has been always teaching us wrong one thing, please don't mind that, but that's the fact. When we were child, we were always said, study hard. When we grew up, we were said, work hard. My whole debate is, when it is hard, why we need to do it? So the only way you can do it is, study joyfully, work joyfully. And seriously, no one will take away the credit from you. And last thing which I want to tell you is, the day you little bit feel that you have forgotten about I, me, myself, I personally believe the world will not forget you. So keep striving, keep thriving, and keep on coming with good ideas. Thank you so much.